now what I'm doing is starting my water change. So I've turned the pumps off, which means the water level in the tank's gone down a little bit and the water level's on, the sump's gone up a little bit because the pump is now off. Now what I'm doing is going to use this to clean the gravel. So the way I'm going to do that is stick this into the gravel and the gravel spins around and the dirt comes out. Now I'm kinking this to control the amount of sand that gets sucked up. So just by kinking it or unkinking it, will just govern how much does. Now I actually cleaned this gravel last week. So it isn't really that dirty because I did it last week. Most people tend to do this once a month and you'll be surprised how much crap you get out of your tank when you do this. And the quality of the food you feed makes a massive difference. Like in this case, we're feeding Spectrum, which is a very good food. Spectrum does have a probiotic, which is even cleaner than that one, but that's a very good quality food. So the quality of your food will be one of the most determining factors on how clean your gravel will stay. Because obviously, bad quality food tends to have dirtier water. So this water going through the, the gravel cleaner like this would be quite dirty. So this is just a matter of starting a suction and sucking the water down. Then we put that in the gravel, spin the gravel around. And the other thing is, if you haven't done this for a long time or if you're going under rocks that you haven't done for a while, make sure you put some poly filter in your filter. This, this is pretty clean, so this one's okay. But if there's a lot of crap coming out of your gravel, I definitely want to use poly filter because you can get, particularly if your gravel's like thick, this is not. This is a nice layer of um, coral sand. If it's a real thick layer of coral sand, you can form what's called hydrogen sulfide, which is a poisonous gas that can build up in your sand. This tank has basically no risk of that because the sand's not super deep. And all in all, the sand's pretty clean. As I said, it was done last week. Once a month is usually good. So you can effectively see this. And once again, I'm kinking this to make the sand go down. And I'm releasing this like this, releasing it to make the sand go up in my tube because that's the way you sort of control it. And then there's my dirty water coming out. Because what I really don't want to do is do a water change by pulling the good water straight out of the surface. I want to pull this crappy water out of the sand. And you can obviously see there's a lot more discolored than the nice crystal clear tank. If I pulled it out of the tank, it'd be crystal clear in the bucket, but it's absolutely not crystal clear in the bucket because I'm doing it through the sand. So you can see the crap getting sucked up there. And this really is a best case scenario. The other thing is there's not a lot of fish in this tank right now. So the less fish in the tank, the cleaner your sand tends to be. When you're doing a water change, a one quarter water change is a very good um, amount of water to change. I always use the gravel cleaner. And when you're doing your water change, it's really good to leave your last couple of buckets out because sometimes you over or underestimate the amount of water you've got. So it's a really good habit to leave your last couple of buckets because just in case you've taken too much water out, you don't want to be stuck rummaging around looking for salt water. So if you just leave them, then if you have miscalculated the water that you've supplied, then you can always just tip this back in again and keep yourself out of trouble. So save the last couple and then chuck them out when the water's changed and then um, you're all good. Now, when you're retopping up the aquarium again, you need a combination of salt water and RO water. So if I'm trying to lower the salt, like I was last time I was here, I'll bring more RO than salt to lower the salt during a water change. In this case, the fish are looking better and we're thinking about adding a shark. So therefore I will add more salt water than RO water because I want to slowly raise the salinity and prepare the tank 
to be able to put a shark in it. So the combination of salt versus RO, and then I always take put a bit of spare RO to fill up the top-up system because it's better to use RO than tap water when you're filling up the tank. Now this thing here is a top-up system, and what this does is when the water falls below this level, then it turns the pump on, which is inside here. And then this pump pumps the water over into the sump, which raises the water in the sump. So we want to put RO water, not tap water in here. And then this reservoir, is, is the pump in the reservoir is controlled by this top-up system. And this top-up system puts the RO water into here, which combats your evaporation. So this is a very good thing to have. So right now this top-up system is beeping because the level is too low. So I'll just top that up a little bit. We'll stop that beeping. And right now we don't have the skimmer on because we've put a little bit of medication in the water because the fish have had a little bit of white spot. So we have treated the fish and we've dropped the salinity and now the fish are starting to look better after running the medication but probably in one week we'll turn the skimmer back on again assuming the fish keep going as well as they've been going and we've also been dosing with Vugal which is something that I'm a big fan of it artificially increases the immune system of the fish and I've had very good success with it just like I believe I have here, because last time I was here, the fish had white spot. Now they're actually looking really good. Thanks, Google.